Today in this video, I'm going to show you how to use control points if your alignment doesn't end up as great as you had hoped. You should be able to download the images that I'm going to be using so you can try along with this video, but keep in mind that depending on your computer and which version of reality capture, you might get slightly different results for how well they align, but they should still hopefully give you at least two different pieces. So why do we use control points? Well, let me bring in the images first into the program. So I'm just going to drag and drop those into my 1DS and we can take a quick look at them before we align them. Usually we end up with control needing to use control points when we don't have that great of a photo shoot. So for this one, I did capture this bowl. Um, it is very obviously sitting on this platform. So um, it will use this platform as a way to uh, create the prod product, but also um, when I flip it upside down, we still have that. So reality capture does get a little bit confused when I run this, because you can also see like the table that it was sitting on as well. Um, but if we're lucky, you know, I have pretty good success results using control points. Um, with forcing them together. So I'm going to quickly go to alignment and align my images. And keep in mind, I will be pausing the video while it does do the um, some of these processes so you don't have to sit here and watch it. There is a previous video that does show you the process of how to create models from an image set. And if, if you haven't gone through that, you might want to consider that before this one. So let me hit align. And when it's done, we can see that what happened is that it actually split it into three different components. So we have component zero, which looks like kind of looking down into the top of it. Maybe it's the outside. It's hard to kind of tell at this point. Um, component one, which is when it was upside down and component two, which looks like it was that right side up. But because the images had a lot of inconsistencies in it, it didn't quite know how to make it one single component. But um, if we're lucky, uh, we can use control points to force these components together into one single object. So let's get started. Um, the first thing I usually like to do, and this isn't a thing you necessarily have to do, but I've found that it's helpful, is to go through and make draft versions of, or I'm sorry, preview versions of all of the components as well as colorize them. So it's a little bit easier for me to see, you know, what I'm working with and where certain points are on the object. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a preview of all of these. Um, the nice thing is that it only takes a few moments to do this. It's also helpful if you do have the actual object in front of you so you can kind of um, look at it and find some nice points to work on it as well. Um, but you know that's not always possible. Uh, so doing a quick preview of all of these kind of will help you be able to visualize this. So let me just finish this up super quick. And what we're going to need to do is we are going to need to find three points of um, a consistent spot on all of our components. Sometimes you might only have two components. Uh, this one did split it up into three components, but um, whenever I'm doing control points, I always have the best result with three points. Um, I've honestly never really gotten it to work with less than three points, um, but I also have the best luck with getting it to work when um, they're kind of three points that are not too close to each other. So we wouldn't want to find like three points, for instance, like right here, right next to each other. Um, we'd want to find three points that are kind of, you know, separated. So the way that I tend to do this is I, I will kind of, you know, look at them and make sure that I can find three points um, consistently. And most likely to get them on all of them, it's going to be somewhere on the rim you know, kind of on this outside point where this one, I have to make sure it's not too far down. Um, but that seems to be a point that I could get on all three of them. 
So usually I'll pick one and I'll start with my first control point. So I'm going to do it on this piece right here. If you kind of see, you know, you kind of look around, um, I have this little gold speck on the rim. And what we need to do is be extremely specific with where we're putting these control points. So the method that we do this, I'm first going to actually switch it to um, the, this one by one by one layout uh, because when I go to alignment and add control points, I can switch this over to 2D. It doesn't do it already. And it'll actually show me the image that one of the images that it's using um, for making this 3D spot. So we can see the there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, eight lines, seven lines, and they change as I move them around. And those are pointing to the photo in space of what made that specific spot on there. And then over here on the right, it kind of shows us that photo. And this is really helpful for us so that we can zoom in. I'm just using the middle mouse button and scrolling in. And this is on component, component zero I'm starting with, and I have at control points on. Um, I need to find a very specific spot um, because I need to be able to find those consistently on all of those. If you notice, I rotate around um, this. It feels very weird at first, but what it's actually doing is also looking at that image from that angle. So if you end up with something very stretched and strange like that, try rotating your 3D object um, so that it's a little bit, you know, more consistent. It looks the image looks a little bit better and you can then use your middle mouse button to scroll in. So I'm gonna put my first control point very specifically at, you know, this kind of looks almost like a triangle. I'm gonna put it very specifically kind of at the end of the triangle, because we want a very, you know, contrasting point that's very easy to find on all three of our components. So I'm gonna position it. I'm going to, you know, left mouse button click and what it's going to do over here now is we can see we placed point zero. And based on where we placed that, all of those lines, it's telling us where then on this image does it think point zero is. And you know, when it's dark like this, that means it does want us to come over and confirm, yes, that is where point zero is on this image. Um, honestly, you know, if if it's doing a pretty good job, you don't need to look at all of them. Um, Every once in a while, it does suggest something that's really bizarre, but you know that's kind of a good good way to make sure that we are doing the point consistently. And sometimes our viewports are going to get a little bit weird, and we might need to click back to the right one. Something else I'm going to suggest, and this is just from my experience, is uh, sometimes I have a really hard time remembering this very specific spot once I move to to the next component. So something you can do um, is use your snipping tool if you're on a Windows machine um, to take a quick image of what this looks like so that when we go to the next component, it's easier to find. So I'm going to switch this real quick to a five second delay and click new so I can kind of hover over this point. And I'm going to wait for the snip tool to turn on so I can easily take a snip of that image so I can remember exactly where I put point zero. So I'm going to move that over to my other monitor to look at. Control points are very particular with how things are selected. So I'm done with component zero. I'm going to go to component one. I do need to make sure that my point zero control point is still selected. So I click to component one. I do need to click back up to point zero. Otherwise, if I click on this object, it's not going to put it in point zero. It's going to make point one. It's going to make a new control point. So I need to make sure that this is selected before I do that. So this can be the tricky part is now I need to rotate around and figure out where that point was. And I believe um, it's going to be here. You can kind of see, you know, I have to kind of spatially look at this because it is flipped around. But I'm pretty sure this is the same point right here it would be right um, right here on this end. So I'm going to then make sure point, point zero is selected and I'm going to left mouse click on that point. 
and notice it now has all of these, which it is telling me where 0, 0.0 is, you know, on this component. So I'm just going to kind of come through. You know, I'm going to double check a couple of them, but honestly, this usually pretty fine. Um, unless you have like a really bad photo set, um, those are usually correct. So I got 0, 0.0 on components 0 and 1. I now need to find it on component 2. So I'm going to select component 2. I'm going to switch this back to this. I'm going to make sure point 0, 0.0 is selected after I switch it. So let's rotate around and I can see that it is right here. It's this little dot right here. So I'm going to come in to about right there. Click point 0, 0.0 and it's going to um, give me these points. So let me just double check. Yeah, that's probably correct. And select all those. All right. So next I'm going to need to find two more points. Um, so I'm going to go back to component 0. Um, let me switch this back to that viewport. And I'm going to find something that's a little bit off of that. So I don't want to do it like over here, but over here, it looks like we have a really easy thing to, to, to find. It's like this white chip on here. So um, I'm going to probably do it on the very tip of this, like right here. I'm going to click, um, even though, you know, I've already placed my point zero on here. So now if I click here, it's going to add, automatically add a new point, which I'm then going to have to come through and confirm yeah, these all look pretty good. That that is point one. I'm then going to go to component one. I'm going to make sure point one is selected after I click on component one because I don't want to add another control point and I'm going to locate where that is, which I believe is right here. Again, I can use my snipping tool if I do need help remembering what that area looks like. And we have it right here. I'm going to zoom in. Add my point one. And yeah, these look pretty good. So I'm going to confirm all these. And then I just have to do it on component two. So again, selecting component two, double checking point one is selected. And there it is right there. That's why it's really important to make sure you find spots that are super easy to find, like super contrasty um, and, you know, in opposite areas so that it makes this part go a lot smoother. If it doesn't work at first, I've done this a lot of times where I feel like I've found a good control point, but it's just does not, it ends up not being easy to find on the other components. Um, there's nothing wrong with, you know, deleting out your point and trying to find a new one. All right, got point zero, got point one. I need to find one more control point, which let's see, I got one there, one there. So I'm going to find one over here, probably like a nice one. So let's zoom in um, for this one. This one's a little bit tougher. Maybe I'll do this light point right here. We can see if I zoom out, I have kind of like these three things, these three gold things. If I zoom in, this is a pretty noticeable point but next to the middle one. So I'm going to click on there to make my other control point. I'm going to select them. This one might be a little bit harder for me to remember. So I am going to use my snip tool. Set this to a five second delay. Um, I need to save it just so I can easily keep a record of where that is. Let's go to component one now. Make sure point two is selected. So it should be the middle one right here. There should be a light dot up right there. So wait. Let me make sure I can do the right one. 
So it's about halfway. Maybe on this side. So I think it's actually this dot right here. Wait, let me look. No, I think it's this one. That's why sometimes taking these snips is really important because it can really help you. Yeah, that looks right. Point two. Let's confirm those and we'll do it on the last one. So it should be over here. And it should be this dot right there. So let me zoom in. Right there. My two is still selected, so I'm good to go. I'm going to click on that and confirm those. Once you have all three, the next step to do is rather um, we're going to turn off at control points. Well, I guess you don't really need to. There you go. Turned off. Um, we don't want to align the images again. What we want to actually do is click merge components because rather than going through that whole process, what it's going to try to do is just take what you have with your control points and try to smoosh them into a single component. And if we're successful, um, it'll spit out you know one at the bottom. If not, we'll see another component 0, 1, 2 coming out underneath. So let's see. Yep, right there. Component zero, um, one in brackets, which means if we look at this, we only have one now. It takes all of our images and it is now smushed together. I will run this through the entire process so you can see this. So I'm gonna go then to mesh model and do a normal detail. we can see that we have a little bit of junk um but we can easily clean that up uh let me go ahead and go underneath uh, scene 3d tools i'm going to go to my advanced selection down here i'm going to select the largest connected thing which should select my bowl um i even do this normally even if I don't necessarily see weird floaty bits just in case there are weird floaty bits I'm not aware of I'm then going to invert my selection and then filter it out so now we just have the bowl left last let me go back over to mesh model I'm going to do a quick colorize on it to get that nice color on it and there we have it all ready to go i do want to do a little cleanup now that i have my final component i can actually delete these out it will save space uh, sometimes these files can get pretty big um, i also don't need that first model one that's the one i did before i cleaned everything up so we can delete that out and i'm just left with my nice final model that i can export out now as an fbx let's go to tools mesh and point cloud and we'll do an fbx this let's go to bowl this is where i'm saving it all out bowl underscore ipoly since we are using vertex color do make sure you are exporting it out as an fbx and not an obj so let's click save and we are good to go hopefully this was helpful for you um, control points are one of those things that the more you do it, the better you get. Don't be frustrated if the first time you try control point, it doesn't work. Uh, feel usually if it doesn't work the first time, I will delete out, um, control points and try it again. Sometimes though, you just have a bad shoot and there's no way to fix it, but hopefully, um, this will save some of your shoots if you do end up in this situation.